Hello, hello, welcome back to Doing Bart Things, and today, in my decidedly lower end production, coming from my room that's a mess, um, <laughs> uh, just doing some work today, um, had to work from home, some repair guys are coming to look at the home, uh, had some water just come up in the kitchen for no reason, so that's always a great sign, and the thing you look forward to, um, and just another example of why I'm ridiculously busy it's not because i'm doing things i want to do it's because uh father of three husband um homeowner and um it service desk manager <laughs> so uh yeah global global service desk manager uh throw that in there because uh not because it makes me look good or smart but it just makes hopefully everybody realize that i end up having to work after hours and talk to people who are offshore and uh, I get no personal time. So there you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm the one who is, I'm trying to have a conversation with my, my spouse. I have to go on my phone and reply to emails in nine o'clock at night, our time and stuff. Like it's, it's so much fun. Um, but it's a career and uh, the bills get paid and, you know, with any luck someday I'll I'll retire or move on to something else that may be a little less stressful. Who knows? Um, we'll see. Anyway, I thought I'd make a quick video. Found something that I finally decided was maybe interesting enough to have a talk about because it could represent maybe a shift in NVIDIA's thinking about consumer graphics cards in the upcoming uh, uh, release of the 50 series. So that'd be your 5080, 5090, 50, 60, whatever, right? Um, NVIDIA is rumoring to feature a 448-bit memory bus. Now, previous leaks said that this was going to be a 512-bit bus, and now we're getting a rumor that says GB202 is going to feature a 448-bit bus. Um... Apparently, 512 is available, like they could go that far, but they're choosing maybe not to. What does this mean? Well, it means it's not going to be as fast as it could be. Um, having said that, I mean, the 4090 is already far and away the fastest GPU you can buy, um, pretty much. The 7900 XTX in raster can get in the ballpark, ballpark. Uh, I don't want. I want to be clear. Not as fast. Um, in in some situations, match it. Okay. But you have to understand that's overclocked to the extreme. Like that's really hammering the 7900 XTX to do that. That's not just something that 7900 XTX just does on a typical basis. And you know, if you go through and you cherry pick um, um, games and benchmarks and things, you'll find some things where the 7900 XTX, I am sure, you know, in this one obscure thing will beat a 5090, right? Because certain things are optimized for other, for certain situations. Um, if you go find, if, if you go cherry pick the golden sample, you'll find what you're looking for. You know, that's the case with many things. Um, but on an average, on a total, in most all situations, the fifty, the forty ninety, at this second is the fastest GPU you can buy. Period. Um, there's not much in that wiggle room for something else being faster. Um, again, there are situations where the forty eighty and the seven hundred uh, the RX seven hundred XTX, you know, like I'm saying. There's those golden scenarios. So I don't want anybody coming in the comments and going, but, 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 you know, it's like, well, I mean, the 4090 just is the fastest one. Um, now, it takes a lot of power. Um, it's massively expensive. I expect the 5090 to also be very expensive. But this rumor combined with another rumor about the slots on the cooler make me think perhaps NVIDIA is going to maybe come a little bit to their senses 
and try to tackle this a little bit differently. So we're talking about 28 gigs of um, VRAM, which is nice. I personally would have liked to have seen 32, but my guess is we're not seeing 32 because the actual bus is only 448. So on, on the GPU, the more typically, not always, it depends on the capacity of the chips, right? Um, but typically, but the, the normal way it's done is if you have multiple chips around, it increases your bandwidth. And that, that bit rate is measuring bandwidth. So it's kind of like, um, and again, it's, I'm not the greatest at analogies, but I'll do my best. So if you have a river, right, the, the data path is kind of like the width of the river. So obviously a wider river is going to hold more data, you know, flowing. And the memory speed is how fast it goes, <laughs> basically. Doing my best here, man. Uh, something like that. Maybe someone will have a, a better way to explain it. But basically, it's like uh, if the path is bigger, you can move more data across it freely. Or if the frequencies are higher, then you can move more across it that way, right? For the for a, on a smaller bus. Um, and then your your gigabits per second. Um, so this number right here, this 1568 gigabits per second, that's the result of that, the combination of those two things, how fast it's moving and how big the actual path is. So <clears throat> when they use more modules, more memory modules, it increases this, uh, this, um, path. And that's why here it lists 14 times eight gigabit. Right, so if they're using eight gigabit chips, um, you have that times fourteen. You know, there's fourteen paths, right? And when you do all the maths, it comes out to around fifteen hundred sixty-eight gigabits per second, is what your ended flow is going to be with the frequency of memory. Um, and you know, I I think if this was the original five twelve. I would have to maybe look at the math on this, but they would probably have to add another chip or rearrange it, and you would end up with 36 gigabits. Maybe because they would have to use a higher clock speed and less chips. You know, they, they can configure this thing any number of different ways. Um, that's just hopefully giving you guys kind of an understanding of, of what some of that means. Um, now... The other rumor mill item is that this cooler, the reference cooler, which is the, uh, what is it, the Founders Edition cooler, I guess is what they call it, from NVIDIA, is only going to be two slots on the foundation model, foundation uh, cooler model. So, what does that mean? It doesn't have as much data path as we thought it was going to have. The cooler is not going to be as big as we thought it was going to be or need to be. So maybe um, what's happening is NVIDIA knows it's out in front. Okay. And maybe they've realized their biggest weakness, the thing that is going to tank their GPU sales, isn't how much performance they offer because they're offering class leading performance. It's how much is that going to cost us, right? So what do you do? Well, you start to, to make the money you want to make, you start cutting things back. You cut back the amount of RAM it has, right? Slightly. You cut back the size of the cooler a little bit. You cut back the power draw because you've eliminated some of that memory. Um, you're not using this 512 bit dead path, although 448 is massive. Um, that's, that's a lot of flow, baby. Uh, so it's not going to have any issues. Uh, and yeah, and you see here, it's going to use not going to use all 16 available memory modules, but only 14. So anyway, that gets back to what I was saying earlier. Are they gearing up to make this thing a little bit cheaper than they originally planned? Is this going to come in, you know, say 50% faster than a 4090? but around the same initial launch cost, so about $1,699, maybe. Because at that price point, the top flight card, I think the 4090s actually did sell. 
I think they were probably one of the highlights of NVIDIA's just dismal uh, 40 series launches. And I'm wondering if maybe they've learned the lesson of you can you can price this flagship GPU more around what you want, but if it's just too much money, it's just too much money. You know, people are hurting right now. Um, I can't tell you, I don't have to tell you what the price of gas is. It's going to cost a lot just to get you the micro center to buy one of these, <laughs> right? So, um, you know, I'm wondering if, and again, I am, <laughs> I'm just laughing at myself because I'm, this is maybe some major copium. This may be some major, you know, just a uh, hopium uh, on my end. But I wonder if maybe someone in the boardroom hasn't stood up and gone, hey, perhaps we should make a $3,000 GPU. Maybe that's not what the market is going to buy from the consumer end. Maybe. You know, um, the super duper flagship GPUs, which would be like your GB201, that's going to be um, uh, that's going to be your AI chips, right? Massive AI chips, and then you have GB two hundred two, um, which will be your fifty ninety. Um, it should. I, I wish I could tell you that the GB two hundred two um, cut down would be the um, fifty eighty, but it's not. I, I think the fifty eighty is squarely going to be a 16 gig GB203, which is going to be a smaller chip. So that kind of sucks. Um, but I wonder if maybe they've, you know, had a thought and like, hey, let's keep uh, let's keep our lineup in that thousand dollar range, except for this guy, and we'll price it up because obviously it's the fastest thing out there. So absolutely, you know. But I just don't know. I just don't trust them enough <laughs> to make that call. Um, but I see signs here that maybe they could pull something like that, which would be really cool. Um, it would show maybe they're kind of coming back to earth on what, you know, might be out there. Now, here's the downside, and here's what may have happened. Why are we going to make a more expensive product when we're class-leading Let's just make the fastest GPU out there. Like this is enough to be the fastest thing out there. Um, AMD is not launching a top end, top tier card that I'm aware of. Um, everything points to suggest they're going to have another Polaris series, which is kind of the lower to mid range cards. Um, and on top of that, Intel's not there with Battle Mage. Uh, Battle Mage is not going to compete at that, you know, at that top range. I, I think a 5080 is enough to defeat all these video cards as far as just outright performance. The conversation about what you actually need in a video card is a total different conversation. Strictly talking about what's what's going to be, you know, if we're all going to be e-drag racing, <laughs> I guess is what you'd say. You know, what's the what's going to be the fastest out there? NVIDIA's got it. 5090, I, I can almost, you know, I don't have to look at any special tea leaves to go, well, the 4090 probably beats all of those cards that I just mentioned, like RDNA 4, Battle Mage, are not going to match a 4090. So NVIDIA is going to beat themselves with the 5090. So price remains to be seen. And in a slightly cut down spec, 5090 is still going to vastly win. Easily. Or it should. Um, so... Yeah, y'all yeah, know what to think about that, but that's that's kind of the situation we live in, and that's why I'm very guardedly optimistic. I, I really, I could see them just saying nope in pricing this thing three thousand bucks, and they're still going to sell some of them because you know if you really want uh, the max level of detail at four K at three hundred hertz or whatever the hell you know uh, crazy monitor that comes out in the next couple of years. Um, that'll be the card to do it, you know? Um, I, I think we're getting to a point, though, where lower mid-range cards can do 1440p quite adequately. adequately. Um, and 
it's just a matter of making sure some of those lower-end cards have enough VRAM, so AAA games with all their settings stuff don't saturate your VRAM. Um, I think we're starting to run into some of that now, um, but it's not even that big of a problem for a lot of us. I just think it's one of those, look. that is a looking at the tea leaves situation, I think, as we get more and more um, AAA games, kind of like your Hogwarts Legacy. Um, oh, God, what was the other game that came out? Um, uh, was it Starfield, I think? Um, some of these newer AAA-style games, as they come out, <clears throat> they're going to want to use that VRAM. So I do think that there's something to keep keep in mind there. Um, but you can get that fix for, you know, I'm sure Battle Mage will have plenty of VRAM, and it will be faster. It'll be kind of like that 4070 to 4080 range of performance. Uh, RDNA 4 will be very much the same. There'll be a nice big pitched pricing battle between all these cards, and that should be good for us. And I think that a lot of those GPUs will potentially offer a really good price to performance because there's enough competition at those lower lower levels, uh, lower performance levels, I guess we'll say, um, throughput, that, you know, hopefully the regular guy wins. <laughs> you know, the guy who's like, yeah, I... Uh, this economy is kicking my ass and I'm trying to just make sure food is on the table but I'd like to build a at least decent gaming rig um, to have or I'm building my kiddo something which kiddo should be over the moon to get anything close to that um, I think it'll be good as far as like brand new GPUs you get in the used market it's a different game right but uh, <clears throat> yeah that's kind of where I think we're at um, now RDNA 5 so not AMD's next thing, but the thing after that is supposed to be pretty massive. Um, I am also guarded about that. Um, I I don't know. Like I'm not sure what the exact future is going to be on these incredibly expensive GPUs um, because they're just <clears throat> they're just getting so out of out of hand. Um, and, and realistically, I think at the moment, the only company that can take a swing at NVIDIA on the top end is AMD. And the only thing on the horizon to do that is RDNA 5, which is not the next generation, but the generation after that. So we're talking end of 2025, probably, for that GPU. <clears throat> um, and, and I think they actually moved the deadline up for that, so because they killed the top end on RDNA 4 to concentrate on RDNA 5. And RDNA 5 is supposedly, we're, this is huge grain of salt time here because we're, we're talking about rumor mill, but supposedly a complete new ground up architecture. It's not, it's not related to the previous RDNAs. It's gonna be its own thing. Um, yeah, hard to say, but uh, for now, at least, at least until I would say roughly the mid to end of 2025, this is it. Like this is the top end thing you have. NVIDIA technically can charge whatever they want. Um, the only thing restricting them is what kind of mind share they're willing to sacrifice for their, um, for their margins. And that's really it. Um, so there you are. Like I said, um, in summary, <clears throat> what I'm talking about here is the slight bring back of specs for the 5090 um, and the potential that maybe along with those specs they'll bring the price a little bit more under control, still make their margin, but give folks a super high-end graphics card that's going to be probably the fastest on the market without question um, for a price that isn't quite the same as uh, buying a car. <laughs> that's basically kind of where I'm at. Maybe, maybe they don't might cost more than your car uh, the rate we're going. Um, but I think when these things get to the point where you're financing them, like uh, you're, you're donezo, like you've you've lost the plot. So, uh, well, that was it. So, anyway, um, if you would, leave a like. leave Maybe subscribe, even. Um, I keep saying I'm going to try to post more videos. Um, you know, I, I've got some things going on that I've got to get through, which is going to be the story with me pretty much uh, all the time. But uh, if there's something that you'd like to see me weigh in on, 
uh, maybe leave a comment and I'll go take a look and give my two cents um, if that's something you guys would like. Um, there's not a ton going on. We'll probably have some more to talk about after next week. Next week is Computex and I expect a bunch of announcements so we'll, we'll probably have something to dig our teeth into then. Um, including Zen 5. Some interesting Zen 5 information is starting to kind of leak and come out, which I, I sort of thought it would like about a week before the conference. Um, as some of those materials start to kind of leak out and people get their hands on it. Um, and maybe I'll make a separate video about that. that. That might be something good we could do. So anyway, everyone, thank you again for watching and listening to a, a gray-haired man ramble. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, we will see you in the next one.